John and I and a couple friends are reading a book entitled A Severe Mercy. It's about a man and a woman and the story of their life. And it covers their conversion to Christianity. And at one point, while the guy is considering becoming a Christian, he writes in his journal, the best proof of Christianity is Christians. He says, their certainty, their joy, their completeness. And then he said, holiness is attractive. The saints are people that we admire. And we all know individuals who also live the gospel very well and whose lives are attractive. On the other hand, evil is repulsive, especially when it happens by those who claim the name of Christian and who should know better and who should have the grace to act differently. It's especially distressing when we see it within the hierarchy of the church, for example, when we see evil occurring. And oftentimes when we talk to people and ask them, why aren't you practicing your faith or why did you leave the church? Many times they will say, because of the evil that I saw there. Or even more specifically, they'll say, this person or that person is a hypocrite and they come to mass every week and if they do that then why should i and that's like saying i'm not going to this exercise class because some people don't try hard and that's why i'm not going to try at all but you see we shouldn't ask the question why is there evil in our midst why are there weeds in the field of the church The question we should ask is, why are we surprised that there's weeds among the wheat? Because Jesus told us that there would be. He told us that there would always be weeds growing up alongside the wheat because there is a jealous, sleepless foe who goes around sowing bad seed in our midst. And it's always been this way. It always will be this way. Jesus himself chose 12 apostles and one of them betrayed him. And there will always be this type of evil within the church. And we should expect it. In the early church, there was a heresy known as the Donatist heresy. They wanted a very pure church. It was during the time of persecution when some Christians did renounce their faith when they were put to the sword and they said, either you renounce your faith or we take your life. And they said, fine, I'll renounce my faith. And then later on they thought, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. And they said, I want to come back. And the Donatist said, no, I'm sorry, you can't. Because you are the weeds in the field. And today we have people that want to be like neo-Donatists that would do everything if only the church were 100% pure. They're like the slaves of the householder who want to rip out the weeds among the wheat. But this will not be so because this is what Jesus, this is not the plan of God. The church will not be pure this side of heaven. And what we should do is focus on ourselves and examine how am I living the gospel How am I corresponding to my friendship with the crucified Lord, with the risen Jesus? Is the mustard seed of faith taking root in my soul and producing abundant fruit or not? Because God tells us that he is lenient and merciful and patient. He allows the weeds to grow up alongside the wheat, hoping that they will be transformed but only for a time, because he says when the time of harvest comes and the angels are sent out to administer God's justice, then there will be two places. The weeds will be bundled and burned with eternal fire, and the wheat will be gathered into the barn, which I think is really special. We say that Jesus says in this gospel that heaven is like a barn. And uh, maybe like a barn not made with human hands. But the, the wicked and all evildoers, he says, will be, have wailing and grinding of teeth, but the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. 
And so we should look to ourselves and say, how am I doing? We should try to be the wheat in the field of the church and perhaps crowd out the space for the weeds. We should pray for the conversion of the, of the weeds among us, and we should be humble ourselves. G.K. Chesterton said, Yes, there are saints in my church, but the saints are those who know they are sinners and rely upon God's grace in their life. And that's how we should be. And we should look to ourselves and see how are we corresponding so that when the time of harvest comes, we will be ready to be gathered as good wheat into the barn of Christ.